Turning to Iran now, where anti-regime protests and strikes are continuing for more than 10 weeks. In a new report by the Tony Blair Institute, thousands of Iranians were asked about their attitudes towards religion and regime change. The findings show that overwhelming support for regime change inside Iran is largely because Iranian society has experienced mass secularization. This is why I firmly believe it's in our interest today in the countries outside of Iran, including in the West, to show our deep solidarity with the protesters and draw the clearest of distinctions between the people of Iran and the regime. Our efforts should be in support of the former, the people. Kazra Arabi is the Iran program lead at the Tony Blair Institute for Global Change. He's in London. Kazra Arabi, you've polled about uh, thousands of Iranians uh, connected with this uh, protest to get their views. What are the key findings of, of the polling that you've done? Sure. So our new study um, shows that Iranians are overwhelmingly against the compulsory hijab. Not only that, 84% of those Iranians who are against compulsory hijab want regime change. They want to live under a secular state. Now, the polling was conducted by the group for analyzing and measuring attitudes in Iran, GAMON. Uh, the surveys were conducted in 2020 and again in early 2022. Now, what this shows is the longevity uh, of this, of this sentiment, this trend. What we're seeing in Iran today is not a flash in the pan moment. It's not a, you know, a random occurrence. The Iranian people have undergone unprecedented secularization uh, despite living in a hard, under a hardline Islamist theocracy. Um, and really, these protests, these ongoing protests we see today, go back to 2017, where we saw a new trend of unrest in Iran, one that was explicitly anti-regime, not about reform, about regime change. Unfortunately, the West was completely blindsided uh, to this because it was exclusively focusing on Iran through the prism of the 2015 nuclear agreement. Right. So just talk a little bit about that secularization, right? Because like a lot of Westerners, you think about Iran and you view it as this authoritarian theocracy, as you described it. How does a population secularize under the control and oppression of a regime of that nature? Well, for 43 years, more than 40, 43 years, this hardline Islamist regime has sought to violently enforce uh, its ideology on the people of Iran. Uh, it has done so in the name of religion. Naturally, by default, uh, Iranian people have secularized, and the numbers show that Iran society is no longer religious. Um, only in the polls that were conducted in our new study, we reveal that, you know, only 26% of urban Iranians and 33% of rural Iranians say they pray five times a day. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, despite living under a theocratic regime, the effect this has had, um, really the secularization effect, is that Iranians are not only uh, opposed to the Islamic Republic, but they have distanced themselves from religion entirely. Um, if we look at the anti-regime movement, by the way, what we're seeing in Iran today, of those uh, Iranians who are anti-regime, our polls reveal that 76% of those do not find religion important in their lives. Um, that's why what we're seeing in Iran today on the streets, we can be sure that this movement is fundamentally secular. Iranians are united in wanting a secular government. Uh, after the Islamic Republic collapses, we can be sure that a secular democracy uh, will be in its place. It, it seems instructive that, that those findings, right, that the, uh, the Iranians who are protesting are anti-regime, but also di distancing from the regime and from religion, and how the West views and treats and approaches this country. Because Tony Blair, who's involved with your group, has said the West needs to draw a distinction between the Iranian regime and the Iranian people. So what would that look like in terms of foreign policy and how Western nations can approach Iran and make that distinction going forward? Well, look, the Iranian people have made it clear that they do not want to live under the Islamic Republic. Their goal is regime change. That is what they 
are aspiring towards. They are risking absolutely everything on the streets, knowing that they could be killed. They are still persistent. This is the protests have been going on now for two months, despite the brutal crackdown. Now, by drawing a distinction between the Islamic Republic and the Iranian people, the West can enforce significant consequences on Khamenei's regime so that that regime feels the consequences for the brutal crackdown on unarmed civilians. This, these measures will also support the aspirations of the Iranian people. And there are a number of steps the West can take, by the way. Step one, there are numerous ideological organizations that are directly tied to Ayatollah Khamenei's regime that operate in the West, including in Canada, including in Europe. Those, those organizations must be shut down. And uh, those representatives of Ayatollah Khamenei must be expelled. A second, absolutely critical step. Just like Putin's regime, the Islamic Republic is corrupt to its core. It is a kleptocratic, oligarchic system. While the hardline clerics and the Revolutionary Guard commanders enforce, violently enforce, a hardline Islamist ideology on the Iranian people and are killing women for showing a bit of hair, their sons, their daughters, their families, the Arazades, as we call them in Farsi, the noble-born, live lavish lifestyles in Western capitals, including London, mm. including Toronto. Um, you know, these individuals must be targeted with Magnitsky sanctions, freeze their bank accounts, impose travel bans. That's a step that's absolutely critical. We saw how much of an impact this had uh, against Putin's regime in the early days of, of the invasion of Ukraine. And finally, uh, underpinning all this, the prescription of the Revolutionary Guard, that is the step the West has to take. The IRGC is no different to the likes of ISIS or Al-Qaeda. It operates in no different way. It uses indoctrination to radicalize its recruits in a hardline ideology that calls for not only uh, it calls for not only killing Iranians who are opposed to the regime, but torturing them before their death. Uh, let's look at the modus operandi of the IRGC, terrorism, hostage taking, hijackings. Um, the Guard for 43 years, more than 43 years, has been exporting terrorism, not only in the Middle East, but across the West, in Europe, in America. Just a few weeks ago, uh, MI5 announced that it had foiled 10 IRGC terror plots in the UK. Uh, the IRGC must be prescribed as a terrorist organization, um, and that's a really key policy step, by the way, that draws a distinction between the Iranian people and the regime. Put simply, the choice should be simple. On one hand, on the one hand, you have a ideological hardline theocratic regime that is misogynistic, corrupt to its core, that is spreading terrorism uh, across the world, that is killing ordinary Iranians, uh, and is now, you know, aiding Putin's war in Ukraine. On the other side, however, you have a secular liberal uh, progressive population that wants to live under a secular democratic Iran uh, and wants to get rid of this um, theocratic regime. The choice is simple. Um, it shouldn't be hard for, for Western governments. Well, one final question, because uh, we're running out of time. In this report your institute issued, Tony Blair also said that the single most liberating event for the Middle East will come when the Iranian people finally have their freedom. How so in terms of the broader implications for the region? Well, let's just take a step back and look at what the Islamic Republic has done uh, in the past uh, over more, for more than 43 years. The Islamic Republic is the largest state sponsor of terrorism. For the past four, 43 years, it has exported, violently exported its ideology beyond its borders. Exporting the Islamic Revolution is a key policy objective of the Revolutionary Guard. The Revolutionary Guard has created some of the most deadly terrorist groups in the world, including Hezbollah in Lebanon. Uh, the Hezbollah Charter, by the way, was written by Hossein Dehkan, who was the former, for, 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 uh, former defense minister of so-called moderate President Hassan Rouhani. The IRGC has been supporting and creating a network of armed militias that are killing ordinary people in the Middle East. It played a critical role in violently suppressing the uh, Syrian people's revolution. Iran without the Islamic Republic uh, would change the entire dynamics of the Middle East, and it would be the single most liberating thing, not just for Iranians, not just for the people of the Middle East, but for the international order as well. We see that the Islamic Republic is now 
exporting terrorism globally. It has been for more than 43 years and is providing military support to Putin's war in, in Ukraine. It's arming Putin's regime with suicide drones and missiles that are being uh, used against unarmed UK Ukrainian civilians. This has reached Europe's frontiers now. Okay. Kazar Arabi, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.